All right, so this video we're going to look at logarithmic equations, exponential equations, and the and their applications. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start out solving logarithmic equations. Now, what you've got to know about solving logarithmic equations is uh, a lot of students struggle with this, but really it's not that difficult. The two things you've got to remember when you're solving logarithmic equations is you need this. You need a single log equals a number or you need a single log equals a single log. That's what you want. Whenever you're solving a logarithmic equation, that's the first thing you need to think of. Okay? You want one or the other, either one of these forms. All right? And if you can remember this, then, then you can solve pretty much any one of them you want. So, let's look at some examples. So I've got log x minus 3 equals 4. Now remember, we want one of these two forms here. Now, can you see that we have this first form? We have a single log equals a number. All right. So, if you have a single log equals a number, you want to convert it to exponential form. So remember, there's not a number here, so that base is understood to be 10. So if you need to, just write the 10 in if you need to, but convert it to exponential form. So that's 10 to the fourth equals x minus 3. All right, so you should know how to convert from logarithmic form to exponential form by now, okay? So I have 10 raised to the fourth, so that's 10,000 equals x minus 3. And then I just solve for x. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I'm going to get x equals 10,003. Now, whenever you're solving a logarithmic equation, you have to check your solution. Okay? You have to take this and you have to take your answer and plug it back in for x. But you don't have to make sure you get the same thing on both sides. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. Okay? So what we've got to do is take the 10,003, plug it in for x. To, so what's 10,003 minus 3? Okay? And look, even for that, we don't have to know what it is exactly. We don't, I mean, we know it's 10,000, okay? But you don't have to know that. Just ask yourself, okay, when I plug the 10,003 in, 10,003 minus 3, is that positive? Yes. So that's your answer. You have to plug your answers back in and make sure that you'll be taking the log of a positive number. Because remember, you can't take the log of zero or a negative number. Whatever number you're taking the log of, it has to be positive. All right, so let's look at the next one. All right, so we've got log x plus log x plus 2 equals log 6x plus 1. And all the logs are base 2. Now, remember to solve this, you've got to have one of these two here. Okay, you've got to have one or the other. Now, let's look at this. Bring this down a little bit. All right. So, do we have either one of these forms? No, we don't have either form. Okay. Now, we have a single log over here on the right-hand side of the equal sign, but we don't have a single log on the left-hand side. But, what we've learned so far is that this right-hand side that's the log base 2 is log x times x plus 2 and that equals log 6x plus 1 with base 2. So remember addition comes together as multiplication. 
all right? That's why you learned all that stuff earlier, okay, in those previous sections, learning how to expand and condense logarithms, okay? All right, so now this is going to be what? Log base 2 x squared plus 2 equals log 6x plus 1. All right. All right, so now we've got what? And that's base 2. So we've got what? Now we have a single log equals a single log. You see that? It's this form. Remember, solving logarithmic equations, you want one of these two forms here. And we've got this one, single log equals single log. So when you have a single log equals a single log, you use that one-to-one -one property. So, oh, and that should be plus 2x. Okay, distribute the x. So I get x squared plus 2x equals 6x plus 1. So when you have a single log equals a single log, whatever you're taking the log of, you set those equal to each other. Okay? If you have a single log equals a number, you convert it to exponential form. And that's, that's really what you got to know. Okay, so now let's move everything to one side. All right, so let's see. We'll subtract 6x and subtract 1. And so that's going to leave me with x squared minus 4x minus 1 equals 0. All right. All right. Now we've got to solve this, this equation here. Quadratic equation, does it factor? No, it doesn't factor. So it doesn't factor, so we can either complete the square or use the quadratic formula. As of now, I think most students know how to use the quadratic formula, okay? So let's complete the square on it and give you some practice on that. So that's going to give me x squared minus 4x, and i got to move the 1 over and leave a little space. So right, I add 1 to both sides. And so then I half this, which is 2, squared I get 4, so I add 4 to both sides. So I get x minus 2 squared equals 5. Okay. All right. So now we square root both sides. So that's going to be uh, x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. And so then I can add 2 to both sides, and that is going to give me x equals 2 plus square root of 5, or x equal 2 minus square root of 5. All right. Now, remember, we have to check our solutions. We've got to make sure we're going to be taking the log of a positive number. So as far as this problem goes, of course, you know, you may... You may have a calculator, okay? You may have a calculator, and you can plug this into your calculator. But let's do it without a calculator, okay? Because we don't really need to know what the exact number is when we plug the x's in. We just need to know, is it positive or negative? So, let's look at this. So, 2 plus square root of 5. Well, what, what's the square root of 5? Well... The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. So the square root of 5 is somewhere between 2 and 3. It's 2 point something. So if I do 2 plus 2 point something, that's going to give me what? 4 point and then something out here. Okay, 4 point and some decimals. That's, that's really all we need to care, we care about. So, so let's look at this. If I take 4 point something and I plug it in for x, that'll be positive. 4 point something plus 2, that's going to be 6 point something. And 6 times 4 point something plus 1, well, that's going to be positive also. So we know this is a solution. Okay? All right, now let's look at this. We've got 2 minus 2 point something. 
So remember, this 5 is 2 point and then some numbers. Well, 2 minus 2 point something is going to be point and some numbers, but it's going to be negative, right? Because this number here is larger than the 2. So 2 minus a larger number is going to give us a negative number. So if I plug this negative number in for x, well, that's going to be taking the log of a negative number. So that tells me this one is not a solution. And see, once I notice that I'll be taking the log of a negative number here, I don't even have to worry about going and checking the other ones. Okay, all it takes is for one of them. All right, so I hope that makes sense. And if what I explained here doesn't make sense to you, then punch these into your calculator and then plug it in there. Just use your calculator. But that's a way to do it quicker than having to go through your calculator. All right, so how about this one? All right, so remember we want a single log equals a number or a single log equals a single log. Well, you can see over here on the right-hand side of the equal sign, I have a number. But on the left-hand side, I've got multiple logarithms. I don't have a single log. Well, what we learned earlier is I can write this as log x over x minus 1 equals 2. Okay? Remember, if it's split up with subtraction, that comes together as division. Okay? So now we've got a single log equals a number. So... Let's convert it to exponential form. And once again, remember, this is understood to be base 10. And so I've got 10 squared equals x over x minus 1, which is 100 equals x over x minus 1. Right. Now we've got to solve this. So I can put this over 1 and I can cross multiply. So I get 100 times x minus 1 equals 1 times x, which is x. And so that's going to give me 100x minus 100 equals x. Yep. And so now I'm going to add 100 to both sides and I'm going to subtract x to both sides. So that's going to give me 99x equals 100. Divide both sides by 99. And so that's going to leave me with x equals 100 over 99. All right, so now we've got to check our solution. So 100 over 99, that's a little larger than 1. Right? If you punch it in your calculator, you'll get one point something. So if I take the one point something, plug it in for x, that would be positive. One point something minus one, that's positive. So we're good. And so this is your answer. All right, so how about this one? All right, remember, I either want a single log equals a number or single log equals a single log. All right, so I don't have a single log on either side, so I can, I can fix that. So let's take the 2, throw it back up into the exponent. Remember, remember that property. So that's natural log x squared equals natural log x plus 3 times x minus 1. Right. And so that's going to be natural log x squared equals natural log x squared plus 2x minus 3. All right. All right. So now I have, I have a single log equals a single log. So now I can just set them equal to each other. So that's x squared equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. All right. And solve. So you can see here if I subtract x squared to both sides, those go out. So I'm left with 0 equals 2x minus 3. And then if I solve this, I get 2x equals 3 
or x equals three halves. All right. So three halves, that's 1.5, right? We can do that one easy. So if I plug 1.5 in, that's positive. 1.5 plus 3 is positive. 1.5 minus 1 is positive. So they, it works in all of them. Now, the thing that you've got to remember here, and this is important, do you see how we, we took this and rewrote it into this? Whenever you go to check your answer to make sure you're taking the log of a positive number, you have to plug it back into the original equation. All right? You cannot plug it back into one of these. It has to go back into the original. All right. Now, what about this one? All right. So, single log equals a number or single log equals a single log. So let's see what we can do. So that's going to be the log of 3 times x minus 1 equals the log of x over 4. And so this is the log of 3x minus 3 equals the log of x over 4. All right. So I have a single log equals a single log. So I'm just going to set these equal to each other. So that's 3x minus 3 equals x over 4. All right. So to solve this, I'm going to get rid of the fraction. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. And so that's 12x minus 12 equals x. And so I can subtract x to both sides, add 12 to both sides, and so that is going to give me 11x equals 12. And then divide both sides by 11, I get x equals 12 over 11. Now I've got to plug it back in, make sure I'm taking the log of a positive number. Well, 12 over 11 is a little more than 1. So 1 point something minus 1, that's positive. Plug it in there, that's positive. So that one works. All right. So that's solving logarithmic equations. Remember, you want, just to review, you want single log equals number or single log equals single log. For this one, if you get it in this form, you convert it to exponential form. If you get it in this form, you use that one-to-one -one property, and whatever you're taking the log of, you set those equal to each other. And that's, that's all it is. It's that easy. Okay? All right. So now let's look at this. So, <clears throat> solving exponential equations. So, before we do this one, let's just, let's just review real quick. So, if we have 2 to the x equals, say, 8, okay? Or, no, let's, let's do something just a, a little more. Let's, let's do 2 to the x equals, say, 8 raised to the, uh, I don't know, 2x plus 1. Okay, let's say you have that. So, remember... We've solved these exponential equations in previous lessons. You want to get the basis the same. So you got 2 to the x equals 2 cubed raised to the 2x plus 1, right? We're going to get the basis the same. So that's 2 to the x equals 2 to the... Now remember, these exponents here, you multiply. So 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times 1 is 3. And once you get the basis the same, you set the exponents equal to each other and solve. So that's going to be negative 5x equals 3, x equal negative 3 fifths. And that would be your answer. And look, whenever you're solving exponential equations, that's what you want to do. The first thing you want to do is get the basis the same. Okay? You see an exponential equation, get the basis the same. 
All right, now let's look at our problem here. So I've got an exponential equation. I want to get my bases the same, but I can't. You see that? But just remember the first thing, the first thought in your head should be that, get the bases the same. But then when you realize you can't, then all you do is take the natural log of both sides. Okay, and look, yes, if you wanted to, you could take the log of both sides. You could do this too. Either one is correct. I just think it's easier writing natural log rather than log. It doesn't get as cluttered up. Natural log, there's only two letters to write instead of three. Okay, but either one will work. All right, so now I took the natural log of both sides. So now I'm going to use that property that allows me to bring that exponent down in front. So I've got x natural log 2 equals natural log 5. And then I just divide both sides by natural log 2. And so that's going to give me x equals natural log 5 over natural log 2. All right. And then we can plug this into our calculator. So I've got natural log 5 divided by natural log 2 and that is going to be 2.3219. All right. I, you know, round it to four decimal places. If you're in my class, that's fine with me. Just but round it to however many your teacher wants you to. So this is your answer. And look, I don't know how other teachers do it, but as far as I'm concerned, that's an acceptable answer also. This right here is your approximate answer, and this is your exact answer. So you may see in the directions uh, of your homework on solving these things, it may say, give an exact answer or give an approximate answer. If it says an approximate answer, they want you to punch this into your calculator. If they say give the exact answer, then you just leave it like this. Now for the remainder of the video, I may just leave it like this. I don't know, I might, I might write out the decimal, but uh, I'll do either one. But anyway, let's go to the next one. All right, so let's look at this. So we got 3 to the 2x minus 1 equals 5 to the x. All right, so, but, so remember, the first thought you have, get the basis the same. And as you can see in this problem, we cannot get the basis the same. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So this is going to be natural log 3 to the 2x minus 1 equals natural log 5 to the x. And so then I'm going to use the property that allows me to bring the exponent down in front. So that's 2x minus 1 times natural log 3 equals x times natural log 5. All right. And now we just solve for x. That's it. So this natural log 3, I'm going to distribute. I'm going to use the distributive property. So that's going to be 2x natural log 3 minus natural log 3 equals x natural log 5. Okay, so now what are we doing? Well, we're solving for x. So everything with an x has to go to one side. Everything that doesn't have an x goes to the other side. Okay. All right. So I'm going to subtract 2x natural log 3 to both sides. So that's going to give me negative natural log 3 equals x natural log 5 minus 2x natural log 3. All right, so now what we want to do is what? 
factor out of x, right? So you see how I have a common factor of x there? I can factor that out. I'm going to do that up here. So that's going to give me negative natural log 3 equals x times natural log 5 minus 2 natural log 3. I just factored an x out and I was left with natural log 5 minus 2 natural log 3. And then I'm going to divide both sides by natural log 5 minus 2 natural log 3. Natural log 5 minus 2 natural log 3. And so that is going to leave me with x equals this over here. So x equals, and I'm going to write the x on the left hand side, negative natural log 3 over natural log 5 minus 2 natural log 3. Now one, one thing that you might see the, the answer in the book may not be written like this. What they might do is take this negative and distribute it to each one. You might see this and this, this is a correct answer, so if I distribute the negative, that'll change to positive 2 natural log 3 minus natural log 5, and that'll change to a minus. But you can leave it either way. It's fine. I would just leave it like this, how I have it first. So those are your exact answers. And then if you write the approximate answer, that is going to be 1.8. Six nine one. Okay, that's the approximate answer. This is the exact answer. Like I said, if you're in my class, you can leave the exact answer. It's fine. All right. So what about this one? All right. Exponential. Get the same basis. Get the basis the same. Well, I can. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I've got natural log. 3 to the 2x minus 1 equals natural log 5 to the x plus 7. All right, so now we're going to use that property that lets me pull those exponents down in front. So I've got 2x minus 1 times natural log 3 equals x plus 7 times natural log 5. So now let's distribute, clear the parentheses. So I've got 2x natural log 3 minus natural log 3 equals x natural log 5 plus 7 natural log 5. Okay, just distributed property. Cleared the parentheses. Now we're solving for x. So everything with an x has to come to one side. Everything that doesn't have an x goes to the other side. So I'm going to subtract x natural log 5 to both sides. And I am going to add natural log 3 to both sides. So that's going to give me 2x natural log 3 minus this, minus x natural log 5, and the, these cancel out, equals 7 natural log 5 plus natural log 3. All right, and then what? Well, I've got my common factor of x here, and so I'm going to factor that out. So x times 2 natural log 3 minus natural log 5 equals 7 natural log 5 plus natural log 3. Right. And so now I need x by itself, so I'm going to divide this to both sides. And so that's going to leave me with x equals 7 natural log 5 plus natural log 3 over 2 natural log 3 minus natural log 5. And there's the answer. That's the exact answer. I don't have the decimal answer to this right off the top of my head. And I'm not going to 
I'm not going to punch it in the calculator just to save time in the video. All right. All right, so now that's solving exponential and logarithmic equations. All right, so just remember, logarithmic equations, you want single log equals a number. If you have that, convert it to exponential form. Single log equals single log. Use the one-to-one -one property. Whatever you're taking the log of, set those equal to each other. Exponential equations. Get the bases the same. And then set the exponents equal to each other. If you can't do that, then take the natural log of both sides. Okay? Now that what I just said, I would write that down. If you didn't, rewind the video and write it down. Okay? That tells you how to solve all of these equations. All right, so now we've got the fun stuff here. This is the applications. You hear students all the time, well, what is this used for? What is this used for? Well, now you're going to see. Okay? Now you're going to see what it's used for. All right. So here we have an example. It says the half-life of potassium-40 is 1.31 billion years. If 92.4% of the original, original amount of potassium-40 is still present in the rock, then how old is the rock? All right, so, so that's, that's pretty neat. So first we need the, uh, we need the model for uh, radioactive deta uh, dating, growth decay stuff. All right. So that is A is equal to A naught E to the um, R T. Now, you know, depending on what book you have, it may be written like this, A naught E to the, uh, some books use the K, some use R. It all means the same thing. K and R, that's the same thing. That's basically what we've got to find. All right. So, so let's let's see what all we have. All right. So, the important thing here is they tell us the uh, the half life. The half life is one point three one billion years. Okay. So let's use that to find R. We need to figure out what R is. So what that's telling me, okay, is that if I plug 1.31 billion in for T, okay, because that's the number of years, right? That's the number of years. So that means that a naught, let's do it like this, A naught times E to the 1, 3, 1, 0, 0, and then I think it's, let's see, okay, there's billion, so I plug the 1.31 billion in for T, and then that's times R, right? And that is equal to what? What is that equal to? Well, let's think about it. A naught is the initial amount. Okay, that's how much how much is present at time t equals zero. Okay, that's how much you start with a naught. Okay, so it's telling me this is the half life, right? This is the half life. So if I plug this in for t, the 1.31 billion, how much am I going to have left after? this many years.
half of the original amount. You see that? That's the half-life. Okay, that's what that means. <clears throat> After 1.31 billion, okay, see the half-life, so after 1.31 billion years, there's going to be half of the original amount left. And A naught, see this A naught, that's the original amount. So I'm going to have half of that left. All right. So now what I have to do is I can solve for R. So you can see here. Do you see how if I divide both sides by A naught, they cancel out? And I'm left with E to the 1, 3, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. R is equal to 1 half. Okay. And so now I can solve this for R. Well, we know how to solve this. This is just an exponential function, right? It's an exponential function. I can't get the basis the same, so I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And so that's going to give me the natural log, E, to the 1, 3, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, R, equals the natural log of 1 half. <clears throat> All right. So now this is going to be 1, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, R is equal to natural log 1 half. All right, so I can hear y'all now. Well, what happened to natural log over here? Okay, well, what happened to it? Let's think about it. Do you remember, do you remember that property that says the log of a to the x with base a is equal to x. If the base of the log and the base of the exponent are the same, your answer is just your exponent. What's the base of the exponent? E. The base of natural log is understood to be what? E. That E and that E are the same, so my answer is just my exponent. All right. So now we solve for r. So we're going to divide both sides by this big number here. All right. So I am going to get R is equal to, uh, let's see, natural log of 1 half over 1, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0. So R is equal to, and yeah, we're going to have to punch that into my, into our calculator. And it's, it's going to be a, a pretty big number. That ends up being, oh goodness, let's see, it's giving it to me in scientific notation. So, I think what I want to do here is this is negative point. So it's it's 5.29 we'll just leave it 5.29 times 10 to the negative I mean yeah times 10 to the negative 10. Okay? That's that that's what it's giving me as an answer for r. But it, yeah and it is negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to standard one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros. So that's point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five, two, nine. So there's R. <clears throat> okay, so that's R. So now, what have we done? What, what what have we found? Okay, what have we found? Well, we found R, our equation. So now I can write down A is equal to A naught E to the negative point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
529t. So there's our equation. Okay, that's that's the important thing you've got to find. You've got to find r or k if they use k in another book. You've got to find that. Now let's go back up and see what they're asking us. That's right. We haven't answered the question yet. We we just found out r, which that's what we need in order to answer our question. All right, so it says if 92.4% of the original amount of potassium-40 is still present in the rock, then how old is the rock? All right, so we're going to have, let's see, what did it say? 92.4. 92.4% of, of the original amount is still in the rock. Then they want to know how old it is, so we need T. So, so what do we need? We need 92.4% of the original amount. So 0.924 of the original amount, remember the original amount is A0, is equal to A0, E to the negative 0.1234567895291. T. And, and and maybe on the test your teacher won't give you something these crazy numbers like this you know but you know it is what it is and so once again see how the a naughts they just cancel out so I'm left with and, and I'm gonna write this part I'm gonna write it over here it doesn't matter which side I just like to have six seven eight nine five two I just like to have the E part with the variable on the left hand side, but like I said, it doesn't matter at all. You can leave the 0.294 over here and the other one over here. It's it's all the same. So now to solve this, I'm going to do what? Take the natural log of both sides. So natural log E to the negative 0.1234567895291. Is equal to the natural log of 0.924. And so this is going to give me, I'm going to come over here and finish the problem. So this is going to give me negative 0 0.02, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 5, 2, 9, t is equal to natural log of 0.924. All right. Now, and remember, the the natural log goes away just like it did before. Base E, base E. And so that's going to give me T is equal to natural log of 0.924. Divide both sides by this number. Negative 0.1234567895291. Um, T. Nope, I'm sorry. It's not a T. Just 529. And so T is equal to what? Well, when you plug this in, you get about 150 million years. So you would get something like, I mean, I don't know what it is exactly. I'm using the answer from the book. They carried it out to more decimal places than I did. Um, so, you know, to find R, I'm assuming they carried it out to more uh, decimal places r value i kind of i rounded it but uh yeah that's what it is you just do this divided by this and it'll give you your answer but that's it, it comes out to about 150 million years all right so what about this one all right so here, here's another half-life problem maybe the numbers in this one won't be so bad all right so it says the half-life of the antidepressant prozac is an average in an average man is two days. So that's the half-life is two days. How long does it take for 95% of the original dose to be eliminated from the man's body? All right, so we're going to do the same thing. A equals A naught E to the RT. All right, so let's look. Let's set up our equation just like we did here. See, they gave us half-life. And so I've got A0 
e to the what? 2r, right? Half-life is 2 days, so I'm plugging the 2 in for t, and that equals what? After 2 days, you're going to have half of the initial amount. Okay? Half of the initial amount. So if I divide both sides by a naught, I'm left with e to the 2r equals 1 half. All right? So now we can what? We can take the natural log of both sides. So natural log e to the 2r is equal to natural log 1 half. And so this is going to give me 2r equals natural log 1 half. And so r is equal to what? Natural log 1 half over 2. And so that gives me r, because I divided both sides by 2. So r is equal to negative 0.3, 4, 6, 5, 7. There's R. So what that does is that tells me my equation is A equals A naught E to the negative point, what was it? 3, 4, 6, 5, 7, T. There's my equation. All right? Now, this is where this is where you need to be careful on on reading the problem. Okay. How long does it take for 95% of the original dose to be eliminated from the man's body? So that tells us what? That tells us that if I take a naught e to the negative point three four six five seven t equals now I want what ninety five percent of the original dose to be eliminated so that's going to equal what point zero five a naught all right so don't don't let this confuse you now. Don't let it confuse you. 95% to be eliminated. So that means that I'm going to have 5% remaining. Right? I have 5% remaining. So what's 5% of the original amount? That's 0.05 times the original amount. Look at this up here. Notice what this one says. If 92.4% of the original amount is still present in the rock, okay? It's, it's how much is present. It's that percentage times the initial amount, okay? It's that percentage times the original amount, how much is present. So what is this one? How much is present? Okay, the percentage present. The percentage present is 5% because this is to be eliminated. So how much do I have present? What percent? 5%, so 5% times the original amount. All right, and then the, the A naughts, they cancel, so I'm left with E to the negative 0.34657T. Oh, yeah, equals 0 0.05. And so I can take the natural log of both sides. Right, so I'm left with negative point three four six five seven t equals natural log of point zero five. Divide both sides by this number. I get t is natural log times point zero five over negative point three four six five seven. 
So T, once we punch that into our calculator, that will give us about 8.6. And now what are we in? Well, it was the half-life was in days. And so this is days. All right. So, so hopefully you can see, we, we've got another problem to work. So or actually, I think a couple. All right. So you can see that, that when you're doing this, you've got to find R, that num the number in the exponent before the T. You find that, and then you can, then you can solve whatever problem they ask you. All right, so here we've got Newton's model for cooling. All right, so Newton's law of cooling states that when a warm object is placed in colder surroundings or a cold object is placed in, a warm, in warmer surroundings, then the difference between the two temperatures decreases in an exponential manner. If D0 is the initial difference in temperature, then the difference d at time t is modeled by the function d equals d naught e to the kt. All right. So let's look at our problem, and let's let's just go ahead and write this d equals d naught e to the kt. All right. So let's look. Let's go through this. It says a turkey with a temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit is moved to a 350 degree oven. Okay, that's an O there. After four hours, the internal temperature of the turkey is 170 degrees Fahrenheit. If the turkey is done when its temperature reaches 185 degrees, then how much longer must it cook? All right, so we've got to look at the differences in temperature, okay? The differences in temperature. All right, so a turkey with a temperature of 40 degrees is moved to a 350 degree oven, all right? So this is our initial difference. This is going to be D naught. Okay. D naught is 350 minus 40, which is 310 degrees. Okay. That's the initial difference. Okay. So it's it has a temperature of 40 degrees, and then it's moved. Uh, into an oven that is 350 degrees. And remember, the D and D naught is the initial, it's the difference, then the difference D, it's the difference in temperatures, okay? So it's going from 40 degrees to 350 degrees, okay? So the initial difference of 310, okay? So that drops, has dropped to a difference of what? Okay. Has dropped to a difference of what? Well, after four hours, the internal temperature of the turkey is 170 degrees. Okay. So that is is going to give us D is equal to what? 350 minus what? 170. And that is equal to 180. Okay, and remember, and this is, this is after four hours, okay? So, so what is this going to allow us to do? Well, we've got D naught and we've got D, right? We've got D naught and we've got D. Remember, this is the initial difference and this is the difference after four hours. So it went from 
40 degrees to being placed into 350 degrees. So that difference is 350 minus 40. Okay. And then the difference of this, we've got 350 to 170 after four hours. I'll say that 350 there minus the 170. All right. So if we plug this in, we've got 180 is equal to 310 E to the what? Whoop. To the 4K, right? Because these numbers that we calculated here, this, num these num this number, this D number here, that's based on what? Four hours. So T is four hours. So we play, take the four, that's T, plug it in, and remember that gives us what? A difference of 180. All right, so now we divide everything by 310. And so that's going to be E to the 4K equals 18 over 31. That reduces. And so I've got natural log E to the 4K is equal to natural log 18 over 31. And so 4K equals natural log 18 over 31. Divide everything by 4. So K equals natural log 18 over 31 divided by 4. And this is going to give us a value of K equals negative 0.1359. And so what that does is that gives me D is equal to D naught, okay, E to the negative point one three five nine T. Okay. And 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 actually we can go ahead and do this. D equals because that's the initial difference. Go ahead and plug that in there, okay? Because that's going to be 310 because that, that's what we started with. Okay? And that's the initial. So here it says if the turkey is done when its temperature reaches 185 degrees, then how much longer must it cook? Okay? So we're wanting to know when it's 185. So to get D here, we have got to do what? D is equal to what? 350 minus what? This 185. So D is, let's see, 350 minus 185. That is 165. And so we've got 165 equals 310, the initial, minus negative 0.1359t. All right. And so now we can, we can solve this. So we're going to divide both sides by 310. And so that's going to give me e to the negative 0.1359t equals 165 over 310. Take the natural log of both sides. T equals natural log 165 over 310. And so remember that's negative 0.1359 T equals natural log 165 over 310. Divide both sides by this negative 0.1359. So T is natural log 165 over 310 divided by negative 0.1359. And so that gives me T is 4.6404. And that's hours, right? All right. So... 
guess what? We still haven't found the answer. All right. So what, what did it say? It says, uh, so a turkey with a temperature of that after four hours, the internal temperature of the turkey is 170 degrees Fahrenheit. If the turkey is done when its temperature reaches 185, then how much longer must it cook? So this is the total time that it has to cook to reach to reach the 185 like they ask the 185 here so that means it see for here uh, where, where is it where is it where is it after four hours it's that okay so how much longer do we have to go so that's going to be 4.6404 minus 4, which that's equal to 0 0.6404, and that is hours, okay, which that is approximately, if you convert it to minutes, you would just multiply that times 60, and that would be 38.4 minutes. Let me write that a little better. Minutes. So that, or, you know, you could leave it like that. doesn't matter. All right. Last problem, and you know, th that problem right there is a little tougher than some of those other ones, but it's not bad. So here we have, if N is the number of periods per year, R is the annual percentage rate, T is the number of years, and I is the interest rate per period, and they're telling you I is R over N, then the periodic payment R that will pay off a loan of P dollars is given by this R equals P times I over 1 minus 1 plus I to the negative NT. All right, so let's, let's look at a word problem. All right, so it says a couple still owes $90,000 on a house that is financed at 8% annual percentage rate compounded monthly. If they start paying $1,200 per month, when will the loan be paid off? All right, so first, obviously, let's just go ahead and write down our formula. So I've got R is equal to P times I over 1 minus 1 plus I to the negative N T. Okay. So let's let's go ahead and start finding out what these different values are. Okay. And, and before we even do that, can you can you figure out what we're going to try to find? What are we trying to find? T, right? When will the loan be paid off? That's T. All right. So let's do this. So we've got P, okay. So what's P? Well, P is how much you owe. Remember, let's see, it says, uh, let's see. I know it was, yeah. That will pay off a loan of P dollars. See, R is the payments. See, R is the payments. Uh, the loan is P. So P in this case would be the 90,000. Uh, R, that's, that's the payments that you're gonna make. We just talked about that. And then the other thing we need, we need N. So let's see, N, that's, it's compounded monthly, so that's 12. If it said compounded quarterly, N would be four. Compounded semi-annually, N would be two. Uh, compounded annually, uh, N would be 1, and compounded daily, N would be 365, okay? And then I, well, well wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the, yeah, I is equal to what? R over N, that's what they told us. And so R is, that's the percent, the annual percentage rate, 
that's R, that's 0 0.08 over 12. And uh, I guess we'll just leave it like that for now. All right. All right, so let's plug all this in and then we and then we solve for T. Okay, let me let me plug that into my calculator 0 0.08, 0 0.08 divided by 12. Yeah, let's leave it as a fraction because if you if you punch that into your calculator it's 0 0.00666667. Let's leave it as a fraction so so we don't have to write out all those decimals. Hey, if you want to write out all the decimals you can you can, that's fine. All right, so let's plug this in. So I've got R, that's going to be 1,200 equals P, which that's 90,000 times I, which is 0 0.08 over 12, divided by 1 minus 1 plus I, which is 0 0.08 over 12, to the negative NT. Well, N is 12. So that's negative 12t. All right. All right. So now let's solve this thing. So I guess that see this part here, this exponential part, I need to get that by itself. So then I can take the natural log of both sides. See this this thing right here. This right here, that's the base of my exponent. So I need to get this part right here by itself. Everything else on one side of the, everything else on the other side of the equal sign. And then I can, I can take the natural log of both sides. So, I mean, the first thing I'm going to have to do, look at that over one and I'm going to need to cross multiply. So that's going to be 1200 times 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12 to the negative 12t equals, and that's going to be, oh goodness, let's see. I guess we can, we could probably keep that. I don't know. Let's see, what what's 90,000 divided by 12? 7,500. And what is that times 0 0.08? Ah, look at that. When you multiply that out, that gives you 600. Okay, I just did 90,000 times 0 0.08, hit equals, divided by 12, that gives me 600. So 1 times the 600 is just 600. So that worked out nice there. All right, so now what we're going to need to do, so remember, I'm, I'm trying to get, we're trying to get this by itself. So I'm going to need to divide the 1,200 to both sides. So let's divide 1,200 to both sides. So that's going to be 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12 to the negative 12t equals only there, 0.5. All right, so this this is getting to where it's not it's not looking too bad. All right, so now what do we do? Well, I still I have to get this by itself. So I can move the one over. See, I'll subtract one to both sides, and so that is going to give me negative. 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12 to the negative 12t equals negative 0.5. All right, negative, negative, divide both sides by negative 1. Those negative 1s just cancel. I know this problem's fun to work, isn't it? This is a nice one here. All right, so now I've got it. I've got an exponential equation. See, this is the base raised to a power. So I'll do what? Natural log of both sides. So natural log of 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12 to the negative 12t is equal to natural log 0.5. And then what do I do? Bring the negative 12t down in front. So that's negative 12t 
natural log 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12 equals natural log of 0.5. And what am I doing here? I'm getting I'm getting t by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 12 natural log 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12. Negative 12 natural log 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12. And so t is equal to natural log 0.5 over negative 12 natural log 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12. All right, that was a good one. Now, that is equal to, punch that in your calculator, and you will get about 8.6932 years. And there's your answer. And oh, that was, those last problems were fun. And it's done now. We're finished with the video. Uh, but, you know, just you know it's these the word problems can get kind of tricky some of them can be tough but you know the stuff that we did at the first solving the logarithmic and exponential equations that's the uh that's one of the important parts of this of course the applications are too but you know really needing to know how to how to solve these things okay how to solve the equations so just remember for logarithmic equations you want a single log equals a number or you want a single log equals a single log if you have a single log equals a number convert it to exponential form if you have a single log equals a single log use the one-to-one -one property whatever you're taking the log of set those equal to each other if you're solving exponential equations get the basis the same and once you get the basis the same, set the exponents equal to each other and solve. If you can't get the basis the same, take the natural log of both sides. It's that simple. If you didn't write that down earlier and if for some reason you're still here on this video watching, write that down. Okay? All right. So hopefully this helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.